Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We'd like to begin here first with a look at the root zone soil moisture percentile back on January 17th. The reason why I take you back to that point was because that was the point where we kind of reached the peak of this drought. Remember that in the weeks leading up to that, we had parts of Argentina that saw triple digit heat and the extent of the drought over 40% of Brazil's growing area in the south here was quite extensive. This also hit Paraguay and Uruguay very hard. What you're seeing here is there was a large percent uh, of the land area in the growing regions of South America that saw soil moisture values down there below 2%. Now, northern growing areas like Mato Grosso over toward Bahia, uh, Goiás, Tocantins, these are the areas that had much better moisture. And I'll be honest, the, the, the ideal conditions we've seen in Mato Grosso, which remember is more than 30% of the total productivity for Brazil, um, continue to this point. Now, this was, again, the map at the peak of the drought, and this is how things look right now. So let's shrink that up so you can see a little bit better. This was the newest map. It was released earlier this week, but it shows us that there are still problems with soil moisture in southern Brazil. Now, we have seen better rains move through this area, but I want to do a quick analysis by looking at some NDVI imagery here because there's a big part uh, that despite some of the rains coming through and greening things up, not only here in southern Brazil, but also into Argentina, We've seen in between the two regions, right in through here, that includes parts of southeastern Paraguay, uh, part, portions of Mato Grosso do Sul, Parna, Rio Grande do Sul, and this northern corner here of Argentina continuing to suffer with major drought issues. So let's go look at it. This right here is our latest NDVI imagery. So this was available on February 16th. It's always got a, about a day lag. So when you look at this, just remember these colors over here represent where the crop does not look healthy from NDVI imagery and it looks much better into these uh, warmer colors. Now, what I would like to do is I wanna show you at the end of January. So we can get like a, a two week rolling window on this. So this was the end of January and this is now. So again, end of January and now. So what you see generally speaking is that, you know, from that point at the end of January, and again, we, see, we saw some pretty good rains during that time period, we continue to try to identify some regions that are struggling. I'm specifically talking about this region in southern Mato Grosso do Sul into Paraná. Now there's a large forest here, that's why that looks so bright, but in the surrounding ag land along the Paraná River and the Paraguay River, we still have several um, major producing areas in here that are in, um, we're seeing you know, really quite poor NDVI values. And there are pockets throughout Argentina that look the same way. Now thinking about that, I just wanna do a quick zoom in to show you the areas I'm talking about. So this was one area between Mato Grosso do Sul and Parana where we saw some problems. And I just wanna show you, th this is some very agriculturally productive land. I mean, you can see how dense the fields are here. So this is one of those regions we're concerned about. Let's zoom back out and go a little bit farther south. Here's the forest I mentioned. Okay, see all that forested land? But you come on this side of the Parana River and this is all farmland in through here. You can see it cut out here. Uh, in these areas. So this is another region where we've seen some problems. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that despite some of the recent precipitation that's helped, we still see major, I mean, very large areas struggling with, um, you know, with, with the drought issues. Now from here, I would like to bring you up to speed on some of the latest data from CHIRPS over the last 10 days. This has been a quarter, the quarter we've been forecasting wet. But there have been some pockets outside of that, for example, in Mato Grosso do Sul, parts of Parana, Santa Catarina, and Rio Grande do Sul that have been drier than average. And if we go south into Argentina, this has been an area that's been just very dry once again for the month of February. To show you that, I'm just going to give you some data out of Cordoba. You can see that this was the big rainfall that we talked about happening after January you know, um, 17th. And then since then, we've had very limited moisture returns. We've kind of flatlined on the precipitation in Argentina again, and we're in the middle of a pretty long uh, dry week at that point as well. What hasn't happened is that the temperatures haven't spiked back up again. So we've had the dryness without the, the, the really, really hot temperatures. Where are we looking at over the next week? Well, there's still a stalled out frontal boundary here. So we have another week of rains hitting where they're trying to plant uh, a safrina crop. This would be Brazil's northern and eastern growing areas from Mato Grosso over toward Minas Gerais. We're drier in southern Brazil, but look at the western side of Paraguay, the very northwest corner of Argentina. That's where we're gonna be seeing some more storms coming through. 
And we're going to watch in a few moments that, and I think the models have nailed this. We talked about it now for over a week. This transition is going to happen where we're going to go over drier north and bring in better rains to the south going forward. But the reason why I started off by looking back was to let you know that the damage done to this crop was substantial in southern Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Argentina. That was through much of the front half of the growing season. So let's just take a look at it from the European model. And let's play through the day on Friday. So a lot of scattered storms in the monsoonal area and hitting Brazil's eastern growing areas. But higher pressure still keeping southern Brazil and Argentina dry. This is through Saturday, now getting into Sunday. You can see that through Sunday, we're going to watch the storms move into northern and northwestern Argentina. But this is out of the main agriculturally productive areas to the south. And it certainly doesn't hit the main ag areas of Paraguay, which, are, which is here. Going into early next week, though, the models start to fill that in. Do you see it? This is next Monday and Tuesday. We're seeing better storms coming through Argentina and Paraguay. And then as we play this out through next uh, Wednesday, a lot of scattered storms in this area. So what I'm showing you here is that through the next week, we're certainly seeing a change. It's going to be drier for a few more days and then better chances of bringing in some moisture. And there's a lot of reasons for this. We are seeing a shift in the Antarctic Oscillation that's allowing for this. And the MJO is transitioning. And it's, it's probably the more important component, given the background state of La Nina, to see the MJO pop out in the Indian Ocean in phase three and move toward phases four and five. And this has been a main theme I've had with, with this forecast uh, over the last uh, about 10 days. If this transition occurs, we know what phase four and five does. It tends to suppress the moisture north here and deliver better rainfall to the south. So now what you're looking at is week two, which goes from the end of February through the third of March. And we've continued to see the models back off on the precipitation north and bring in better rains in southern Brazil and Argentina. So what does this mean? Well, this means that we're going to put rain in places that have been very dry. Is it going to undo the longer term damage? I don't, I don't think it can. I think it's too late in the season. Will it help the safrina crop? It probably will. All right. In Argentina, bringing in rain on the Parana and Paraguay river basin, this is a region that I just showed you is in deep drought. We need this moisture coming in here. So we're going to watch this quite carefully. Now, what I'm going to be concerned about is this. It's going to take still another 10 to 15 days to move into MJO phase five. Just like we talked about on Monday, what I want to see is how much longer does it take for this to curl back around here? Does it have to go clear back through the Indian Ocean? Does it stall out in phase five? This will be a critical phase to watch going forward because that phase tends to suppress monsoonal circulations in Brazil. And if that hits at the wrong time for that safrina crop, it could mean issues for it getting right moisture at the right time late in the season. Currently, the long range models for the month of March still extend that drier region, but keep things very wet in the east. And I think this is all due to persistence in the forecast from what's going on right now. You notice that we don't really get a strong signal in southern Brazil, but Argentina, its models just, not only the ECMWF, but the, the extended GFS, continues to put drier conditions late in the growing season here um, for Argentina as well. And again, a lot of that is because of La Nina. The La Nina is still here and it just historically suppresses this. So I think the model is just staying dynamically consistent with that subsidence in this area, therefore keeping it drier. So this story in South America continues to unfold. We're gonna keep a close eye on it and I'll tell you the latest on Monday. Appreciate your attention today. Thank you.